Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, mysterious voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I've found in my travels. Today, I want to talk about a book that I read, one that I've been, um, that I read for the book club, uh, that, the same book club that I read, um, White Negroes for last month by Lauren Michelle Jackson. Another interesting and fascinating book that I definitely recommend you go check out because it's, it's really good. So I'm going to be exploring some more nonfiction today. Uh, and, uh, it's a book about, uh, indigenous individuals, Native Americans, and comedy and entertainment. I am referring to We Had a Little Real Estate Problem by Cliff Nesteroff. So for those who don't know, Cliff Nesteroff is a, um, a journalist and author writing a lot about the history of comedy, but also the history of indigenous individuals in comedy as seen by this book. Uh, he's also written for um, the TV show Viceland in the past, so he has a bit of an um, investigative background. Uh, something that's interesting is that he himself is a white individual. And in this book, he talks a lot about how um, often the history of, of natives is written by white individuals who, who talk about the, the oppression and the plight of, of, of Native Americans. And that's what you find here in this book, too. It's written by, by a white man. So um, just something interesting. I, I do think that like if, if he hadn't written this book, no one would have because... Uh, you know, it's, it's a very niche field, and it's also about uh, indigenous individuals uh, who are so often ignored in society, except for when big events like um, uh, Standing Rock happen. So um, I, I do think maybe it was important that he did write this in general. Just something interesting, I know, not, not really offering too big of a judgment one way or another. So without further ado, let's talk about We Had a Little Real Estate Problem, a fascinating book that I, uh, that uh, let's, uh, let's talk about a little bit more. Uh, I'll do a little summary, a little analysis, and we will move on from there. So we had a little bit of a real estate problem. Focuses on, on two main areas. The first area is the present moment uh, that um, that uh, we live in at the at the current moment. So around so between about about 2010 and 2020, uh, Cliff Nesteroff is writing. Uh, he's he uh, he highlights how uh, for Native Americans and comedy in the present moment, there aren't too many opportunities. Although there there are individuals trying to make their make their way. Uh, sometimes. Sometimes uh, individuals have to drive off the reservations they live on to uh, uh, get gigs that are hours away where they might not receive any payment. Uh, just They'll just receive some mic time and that's that's important to them. And so many uh, indigenous individuals are having to make decisions about whether to continue doing this, whether to uh, uh, stay in this field, uh, how they're going to provide for their family. Uh, a lot of questions um, that are being asked. Um, but a lot of, also a lot of Native individuals are, um, are using this as a platform to engage in further activism, which is very in line with the history of uh, Native Americans and comedy. So uh, you have a lot of that going on, and then you have uh, uh, the fact that um, why, why aren't there uh, any opportunities on reservations? Well, the big problem is that uh, um, those who own the reservations are often are disconnected from the community at large. So they're not funneling that money back into the Native American community, which is why you see a lot of economic disparities in indigenous communities. And uh, not only that, but a lot of the times, um, the people who have those um, casinos and, and entertainment venues uh, on reservations, they often book uh, other um, white comedians, white entertainers, um, as those are what the other um, white patrons want to see uh, rather than the, the natives. Um, so a lot of uh, racism and bias existing in those areas. And so along with this, along with these variety of success and maybe not so much success stories, you have the history of Native Americans and, and comedy and entertainment, uh, which, um, which I think Cliff Nesteroff writes very well, and I'll, and I'll go into a little bit here. The history of, the, of, of Native Americans and, and entertainment really goes back to the, um, the early 1800s. Uh, Andrew Jackson, the worst president uh, ever, probably, uh, just an absolute terrible human being who deserves to rot in the grave he was 
was buried in. Um, that's how I feel about that. Uh, he um, told, you know, uh, Native Americans who lived on the East Coast, you can't live here anymore. You got to go onto the reservations in Oklahoma. And he sent them on the Trail of Tears. Anybody who resisted was shot or uh, uh, faced violence um, a lot of the times. And when, and when they were on the reservations, they, they, they had no freedom, uh, as a lot of the people in power felt that um, the only way to truly get rid of Native American culture was to restrict freedom as much as possible. So truly heinous on the part of the U.S. government in the 1800s, and you know some of that even continues today. Um, uh, a lot of grifters at the time uh, sought to make profit off of uh, Native Americans. Uh, P.T. Barnum and Buffalo Bill Cody, they started Wild West shows that often uh, uh, portrayed Native Americans through stereotypes and caricatures, but they invited these Native Americans to participate. And so that allowed um, the indigenous individuals to, to gain a little money uh, even though they were they were being made fun of in the process, however, the government quickly put a stop to that as they told Buffalo Bill Cody that they um, he couldn't use natives, um, especially if he was going to pay them. And so this, for a short time, resulted in uh, natives just not getting paid at all and often being forced to participate in these Wild West shows. Uh, slowly but surely, vaudeville began to make its appearance in American culture at the time. And um, a lot of the early vaudeville stars were Native Americans who had been adopted forcible, forcibly so, another instance of oppression in, in, uh, in the history of Native Americans, uh, adopted by vaudeville performers and, and given an opportunity there, um, uh, some a lot of individuals making their name. Uh, one of those individuals who made their name was Will Rogers, um, someone who is, is known quite well throughout the entertainment industry. So in addition to uh, doing vaudeville, uh, Will Rogers also did, did a little activism at the time, you know, highlighting the oppression that uh, Native Americans faced, but also the oppression of the common man, uh, noting that uh, a media interest and big business often oppressed uh, uh, those of lower classes. So it wasn't just a problem for uh, indigenous groups. It, it was a problem for the lower classes. It was a, pr a problem for people of color, uh, uh, black individuals, um, Latino groups, uh, stuff like that. Uh, so really highlighting and, and, and using his um, uh, his platform to um, to get at the the crux of the of the issue. Eventually, Will Rogers made his way into radio, movies, and um, um, uh, other um, specters of the of the of the public eye. Uh, on while he was on radio, Will Rogers did um, uh, say the N word a couple times, which led to a lot of public outroar. But before that was um, resolved. Um, uh, and before he could acknowledge that um, uh, he himself had a, a little racism probably baked in by virtue of being around a, um, uh, a system of oppression all of his life, uh, uh, he, uh, he died. And so um, uh, a lot of people, you know, took the time to uh, reminisce about how wonderful and how great he was. Uh, but a lot of these um, retrospectives of his life failed to include the fact that he was native. There, there was such a huge effort to retcon his entire life uh, and and just highlight that he was um, a Native individual. Uh, because I think in order to acknowledge that, you also have to acknowledge the oppression he faced all of his life. And uh, a lot of people are, are very um, adamant about, if you're going to remember Will Rogers, don't forget the fact that he was indigenous. Because then you're just um, omitting an entire part of his life and an entire part of his struggle. Esteroff also goes on to talk about Will Rogers Jr., uh, Will Rogers' son, uh, who lived in the shadow of his father, but also tried to um, avoid the comparisons between him and his father by not going into comedy. He went into politics, and he also fought the issue of termination, where uh, the the leader of the Bureau of Indian Affairs sought, sought to revoke a whole bunch of treaties, which often plunged those communities and those reservations into um, the economic disparities, the economic hardship that you see today and he did his best to fight those finding some success but uh, ultimately discovering that um, y you can't fight city 
hull in that form and in, in that way you can't fight it from the inside um a little um a little something to think about as you as you consider you know um uh politics and, and policing you know something like that uh but uh eventually he uh he stopped telling uh, other natives to vote and he encouraged them to read and engage in activism. And he was a large part in, in endorsing the American Indian Movement, a group of, of natives who went out into the community and sought to engage in a, in a boatload of civil disobedience and uh, sought to disrupt um, the, the normal workings of society in order to draw attention to the plight of, of um, oppressed Indians at the time. And so that was fairly successful. One of their more successful endeavors was uh, Alcatraz. They occupied Alcatraz, um, uh, highlighting how Alcatraz should have been um, given back to natives due to uh, some policies and, and treaties that were organized with the government way upon yonder. And eventually they um, uh, they did find some success with this movement. They, they might not have gotten back Alcatraz, but they were given other lands that... Um, that uh, proved to be, you know, a benefit to them in the long run. And so that was Will Rogers and, and the American Indian movement. Uh, another movement, uh, another event that happened was the Pine Ridge um, standoff between the FBI and um, uh the American Indian movement as well as other groups and that was uh, also a success even though it resulted in jail time for many of the people who were a part of it it still brought attention which was very necessary at the time and then uh, the last thing that Nesterov talks about is um, is Charlie Hill uh, who was um, an Oneida individual um, who made his way into the comedy um, scene in, in Los Angeles um, in the 1970s and 1980s, being very fortunate to meet individuals like David Letterman and Richard Pryor, who gave him opportunities and uh, gave him a, an, a, a platform to not only do comedy, but also do activism at the same time, kind of following upon uh, what Will Rogers Jr. was doing um, as he, uh, um, as he made, made sure to draw attention to the, gro um, to the growing oppression for uh, Native Americans at the time. Uh, that's where the title of this book comes from, too, where Charlie Hill says, um, I, we used to be from New York, but we had a little real estate problem. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, activism was baked into his his comedy, uh, making sure to you know make fun of white individuals, much like how Richard Pryor would also make fun of white individuals, um, but doing so in a way that highlighted the history of of oppression with Native Americans, as I've been as I've been saying. He tried to make his way into Hollywood, but Charlie Hill found that uh, that a lot of the stereotypes that that have existed for for the centuries of um, that, that Native Americans uh, have been interacting with the entertainment industry, industry uh, were, were present in Hollywood. And so s some roles he took on, but a lot he rejected because he didn't want uh, to um, to be uh, you know associated with those stereotypes. Uh, Char uh, Charlie Hill's family noted that he was a very proud man, and rightfully so. He shouldn't have to engage in those stereotypes. And a lot of these stereotypes persist even today, where you have the, the picture of the stoic Indian and uh, the super serious Indian, even though there's this history of comedy in Native culture. Uh, and then the last thing, the very last thing that Nesterov talks about is Standing Rock, how in 2015 the federal government tried to build an oil pipeline on uh, Native American land. And uh, this was met with a lot of um, activism and a lot of protests by Native groups, but it also drew the attention of the internet and it drew the attention of not just Natives, but also white individuals. And so a lot of people highlight this as a, as a real turning point for uh, activism and the Native American experience because now it's, uh, you have the internet, so you're no longer relying on the, 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 media, the media who so often lied about these issues to... Um, uh, to become more aware of, of what's going on for indigenous individuals. Uh, and so before Standing Rock, you had all these problems, but afterwards you, you still have some problems, but not more attention is being paid and more people are part of the cause. And that's, that's always a great thing. And so that's about where the story ends. There's a lot more to be talked about, but I'll let you find that out on your own. In terms of analysis, there is a bit to talk about with this story. I really like Nesterov's writing and how he presents, um, uh, 
each of these vignettes for for the audience um, making sure to highlight native voices as much as possible there's very little um, uh, commentary by him in these stories um, most of it is is told in, in a journalist format where you hear so much from these native individuals and so I, I like that about this story one thing that he touches upon a lot of course is indigenous impression you see this in the boarding schools, uh, specifically with the idea of the boarding school holocaust um, and the uh, how Native American youth were forced on to forced into these boarding schools and, and stripped away of their culture and identity at the time, and uh, it took years before the boarding school system was um, was shut down. Um, it, it's it's a fairly it's fairly recent still too, so I think that's important to consider that we might we might think of these issues um, as long since past, but they're still fairly fresh. Uh, there's still people alive who went to the boarding school. Um, uh, process and um, so we, we can't forget about that when, when we engage in our activism and when we talk about um, uh the, the history of, of oppression in America, that a lot of these issues, especially for black individuals, for Latino individuals, they're still fresh in everyone's mind. He also talks about Wild West shows, how they provided an opportunity for freedom for natives, but um, when the government realized that, they, they took those opportunities away. Because you can't um, have a, a, free, uh, um, a free Native American, because then they're going to realize their oppression and they're going to fight against it with, um, through all their means possible. And that was a that was a big issue, and then the last thing is termination, a fairly uh, recent issue in um, in uh, Native American uh, culture, Nat um, in the history of Native Americans, uh, with the government revoking treaties. Uh, I think that happened during the Trump administration. There were a couple tribes that uh, the Trump tried to revo revoke their um, their treaty rights to, and um, luckily some of them were able to fight it. But I don't think that it was a success for everybody. And I, and I have no doubts that uh, the Biden administration might, might try to do the same, uh, but the uh, revoking treaties, uh, which only leads to further harm for these communities, because then they don't have the access to the government resources that they used to have, and that that results in you know lower access to health care, lower access to schooling, and stuff like that, and so it becomes a big economic problem for these communities. And it's something that needs to be addressed, especially uh, given the idea that blood quantum is still around. The idea that uh, the government gets to decide who is Native American and who is not based on their appearance in the Dawes rolls in the 1800s. So I think if we if we address the idea of blood quantum, it'll help us address the, the issues with termination. Because the government shouldn't be the one deciding who is native and who isn't that's up to native americans that's that's their their say um and if, if the government like that's that's still a racist policy they're implementing and it's something that we need to do away with rather quickly in order to address the racism in, in america another thing i want to talk about uh, with this book is how comedy has has always been sort of an op opportunity for activism. The entertainment industry at large has been an opportunity for for natives to engage in this activism, whether they were doing Bollywood or vaudeville or Hollywood or radio or uh, stand-up specials. Comedy has always been used as this means to talk about the history of, of natives and talk about current events in a funny way that doesn't come off as uh, as confrontational to white Americans and uh, still but still allows natives to highlight the issues that they face so that they can draw more awareness and, and get public support for fighting these issues. There's a, there's a good quote that I would like to read to you. We are a traumatized people. Floyd Westerman and Dennis Banks and Charlie Hill took me in. They understood. They could relate. They were loving. They were supportive. They were incredibly caring. Walker says this is why Charlie Hill's appearances on The Richard Pryor Show and The Tonight Show starring uh, Johnny, Johnny Carson were so valuable to so many. Charlie Hill could stand up and make us laugh and represent us as a people and make us proud. It was meaningful. That's why he was so important for so many of us. Just highlighting how... Uh, Natives could see people like Charlie Hill and feel like they were represented in some way, um, especially feeling you know proud that uh, they were engaging in activism. So not only you know being a positive force out there and being a, a non-stereotypical representation of Native Americans, but also you know fighting for for these oppressed people everywhere. And I think that's um, that's pretty solid. Like it it um, it, it illustrates this oppression. Um, uh, 
but again, non-confrontational. So, you know, the, um, if you're laughing, you're still learning something. And that's the value of Charlie Hill and, and these and Will Rogers and these other natives uh, throughout history is that you, um, you, you get an understanding, you get a different view of natives, and you also find out, oh, these are a bunch of issues that, that I should be caring about. And for, for natives, it's, it's this, this representation that, that matters so much and is so dear. Uh, yeah, it, it reworks society's views of natives because in this book they say, oh, um, America views natives as super serious and they, 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 they're not funny and um, all they care about is the plight of Native Americans. But here are these people come to show you, oh, Native Americans can be funny. Indigenous individuals uh, aren't just these uh, charity cases. Um, they're, they're people we can support and and, uh, and give our money to so that uh, you know we can be entertained or, or learn something. The last thing I want to talk about with the story is how it does highlight there that there has been a lot of progress, but there's still room to change. Like, you know, in the 1800s, uh, uh, Native Americans had no rights whatsoever. They were forced onto reservations and they were killed, uh, and they were sent to boarding schools where, where life was pretty difficult for them. And it does seem like we've made a lot of progress since the uh, since since then, uh, where Native Americans have been, uh, have had the opportunity to enter Hollywood to enter the comedy scene, uh, to make money, to um, find the best life for them. They're no longer forced to stay on reservations. And so uh, uh, it does seem like there's been a lot of progress, but as, I'm, as I've been noting, there, there's always room for growth in terms of the uh, perception of Native Americans, in terms of how the government treats those individuals, in terms of... Um, uh, how there's no opportunities on reservations and more money needs to be funneled in so that entertainment opportunities can become available and so that individuals don't have to drive hours to each gig for low, no, low to no pay and they can uh, they can make this their career if they if they so uh, want the opportunity. There's been a lot of talk of the stimulus um, uh, in, in regards to the pandemic and I do have to wonder if any of that money is actually going to reservations um, just something to consider, um, something to look up, I think. Uh, and then there's other issues like blood quantum and, and treaty revocation and uh, termination. And it's just issues like that that are going to become big factors in the future. And if, if we don't address those, then uh, is it fair to say that no progress has been made? I think that's fair to say. Like, you can, you can say, like, oh... The, the situation for Native Americans is getting better, but if, they're, if their treaties are being revoked and they're ha they have no opportunities um, uh, off the reservation or something like that, then the situation hasn't improved all that much. So, uh, so just something to think about, and especially when we engage in more activism and, and are trying to make life for indigenous individuals even better than, than it was before. So those are my thoughts on we had a little bit of a real estate problem uh, a pretty wonderful um, uh, book about you know not only the history of Native Americans in terms of their experience in America but also in terms of comedy and where they're where they're at now compared to where they've been at before and how they the uh, um, a lot of their activism has been geared to, uh, towards entertainment and, and comedy um, a lot to consider uh, when reading this I definitely recommend that you go seek it out uh, it's it's been a lot of fun to read, and I'm sure you'll learn a lot uh, just by reading it. It's um, uh, definitely something to consider, um, especially because I believe that the the plight of the sto the story of, of natives is so entwined with that of of people other people of color, uh, especially black individuals, uh, um, how they both. Uh, were oppressed for centuries and it, it's taken a lot for them to reach the point where they have now but again more progress is always needed so definitely recommend that you go check that out uh, if you read this before or you simply want to comment on my review be sure to do that below I would love to ha hear from you let's have a discussion about uh, Native Americans indigenous folks and in, um, in both comedy and outside of comedy uh, otherwise uh, don't forget to like share and subscribe so that other people can find out about this wonderful book and until then i wish you the best of luck and your weird and comedic travels farewell